cyber crooks could use these new functionalities to get information from customers. So if you work from the beginning, uh, you can uh, implement some measures, some uh, mitigations. Hello and welcome. We're here in Barcelona doing a masterclass with Caixa Bank on taking digital banking to the next level. In this next chapter, we're looking at the question of mobile security with Caixa's Chief Information Security Officer, Carles Soleil. Carlos, thank you very much for, for joining us. Look, the problem with mobile phones is that they're always being lost and stolen. So, I mean, how can you make them secure from a banking point of view? This is, this is all a problem, of course, uh, that they are lost or, sto or stolen, but uh, there are two b measures. One, uh, one of them is that uh, there's a, a mechanism to, to block and block the phones. This yeah. is, in, in most cases, it's enough if customers do so, yeah. uh, for instance. But uh, again, when they are using our, app our application, uh, they also need to do some kind of uh, authentication, some kind of uh, access to this application, as, as well as from the, uh, just from the phone. Okay. So we are protecting this access. Customers have to do something, and, and, and the customers don't always do something. So how do you educate them as to behave in the right way and take care with their phones? Uh, we use uh, awareness programs uh, throughout, the, throughout the offices, the branch offices, and uh, one of the main premises here is uh, to be aware of uh, any strange behavior or something that, co that could entice the, the, the customer, for instance, to, to install an application to the mobile phone that then would derive to, uh, to, a, um, to a compromise of that. So uh, as, as far as we have seen, the problem is not the lost or stolen phones. Here is it's very controlled. But uh, how um, those phones could be compromised uh, using social engineering. And all the research is that actually it's millennials or young people that are the least uh, protective of their phones and, and, and more careless with them um, and that's the actual target market for the mobile isn't it so so is your education aimed particularly at, at young people not not particularly to uh, young people young people uh, perhaps are careless about some information that they share with others and yeah. with their, their uh, friends their companies but are uh, very aware of protecting their phones for instance uh, to their parents if they, if they are at some age <laughs> or, or other, or other uh, right. partners, no? So, uh, so, so you, have to, you have to convince them it's not their parents they need to worry about, it's actually yes. the, the criminal fraternity. That's true, <laughs> that's true. The, this criminal potentiality. So and, and, and in, in, the, in the mobile phone uh, environment, as, as I've said, almost every kind of attack uh, begins with, uh, with uh, enticing the, the user to do something, some action. Usually, usually to yeah. install an application that seems innocuous, yes. but uh, then or they give out their password in some way. Give up? Yes, the, this is uh, another another way to take uh, information, not only from the mobile phone. That's uh, one way to to get access, but also from uh, applications that are th that you can use on the web as well as the mobile phone. For instance, uh, Telegram or WhatsApp, you can use the web uh, version of it, uh, as well as installing applications if you have uh, an Android, uh, for, in for instance. So if it's breached in one place, yes. it can then be breached in another yes. place? Yes, this, this is uh, one vector of attack. So take the, um, it's more easy to infect or to compromise a PC. For the architecture of the smartphones, uh, it's, it's more complicated without the, um, without the action of the user. So infecting a PC, getting information from that and some link between the PC and the smartphone, which are in, in, in the different uh, systems uh, you have this access, no? the cloud systems, for, in, for instance, uh, for Drive or, or, or in just installing. You can install from your PC. You can install applications to your uh, smartphone. So uh, these kinds of mix between the two worlds is what uh, can be used to, to do something really harmful to the to Now, the now one of the problems is that, uh, I mean, the, the criminal is always getting one step ahead of, of everybody. Uh, so if you're in security, how is it you, you keep up with, with, with the latest ideas that they've got in terms of attacking either phones or, or, or the computer? Yes, yeah, something that uh, we do in the, in, in the department in, in Keshavang is, is to have a, um, a cyber criminal mindset which means that yeah. we, we analyze and we work very closely collaborating with uh, business and, and development teams uh, when a new functionality for an app, 
from an application is, is just conceived. It's not, not, not just developed, but just conceived. For instance, to pay peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, to use uh, social networks to access to your financial data. So when this initiative starts, uh, we work together with those teams, and I have people in my team that thinks ahead and thinks as a criminal, no? Right. How, uh, how those cyber crooks could use these new functionalities to get information from customers. So if, if you work from the beginning, uh, you can uh, implement some measures, some uh, mitigations, and when the, the final product, the final so, application... So this sounds a bit like a hackathon, where, where you have yes. everybody together trying yes. to hack phones. But, yeah. do, but doing so internally. Yeah, in a controlled and, environment. And in, a, in a controlled environment, and uh, but but not only when the application is yet developed and, and, and ready for, for production, but at the initial phases of that, just yes, it's a conception, just it's, uh, it's um, something that has been uh, thought by the business. There, you can think about uh, risk scenarios. And when developing and implementing that, you could, uh, you could understand very well and, and, and protect uh, those applications. So at the end of the day, when we've done all this, um, can we say that the mobile is, is, is less or more secure than other channels? Um, and what's your feeling about that? It's, uh, it's much more secure, but let me explain that. So the mobile environment, especially the architecture that works in, 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 in the smartphones, permits uh, the different applications that you have there, the, the app uh, ecosystem, to protect themselves. If you, if you understand very well the architecture of a smartphone, uh, you can really uh, put in place many mechanisms to protect this application from the others. So uh, giving, not, not giving permissions to them, allowing the same application to self-protect if the, if the mobile is compromised, etc. Uh, you need to implement them, of course, and, and know how to do that in a, in a proper way, but you could protect much more uh, easily than in a PC. Right. In fact, the, the PC, the traditional PC world is evolving to this kind of architecture. So the new smart PCs, the new so systems. So the PC is catching up with the mobile phone? Yes, but the, the problem is in the PC world you have the legacy, uh, the legacy architecture right. and the attack that uh, that was uh, done. Wanna cry? Yeah. Yes, wanna cry. The wanna cry. It's nowadays. It's not. Um, it, it could not happen to a massive number of uh, phones. phones. The phones you need to attack one by one, which is very different. Okay. And as I've said, you need to. Uh, entice the, the user, not, um, it's more difficult to attack them. Carlos, thank you very much for making us feel a bit more secure. Thank you.